Yes, sir. What is goody? Bike life back in the office. You already know, but it's not a sit down video. Today, I will be teaching y'all how I maintain my big bike, my woolly bike, my throne, the Goonery, the 27.5 DZ edition. But to be specific, mine's a BMX 27.5 by 3.0, single speed. So if you came here to watch how to fix gears on a 10 speed, I can't help you, I'm sorry. I will be dropping a bunch of gems, so make sure you watch to the end and soak all this in, take notes, whatever. But I hope everybody's safe during this time, everyone's family's healthy, you guys are healthy, still riding, still outside of reading, still making content or whatever. Nonetheless, let's get right to the video. First, I'm gonna show you guys what you guys will need. You need a 15 with extension. Extension, if you have the peg, if not, you can just use this or vice grips. Whatever, take your wheel off and adjust your wheel because that's what I'll be doing. A 10 millimeter for my cranks, a five millimeter or a multi-tool. I keep this with me all the time, but if you don't have this, then, then a five millimeter will probably do just for you. Some grease and some chain lube. Also a towel uh, to wipe down stuff, parts, you know. Peep the new DZ pattern pattery, no cavalry for the top tubery. Yes, sir. So the maintenance that I'm doing today is something that should probably be done once or twice a month. Conditions are gonna be different if you're in the rain, if your air is dry, if your air is hot. Depending on what you do, you might need to do this more often or less often. I'll probably do mine once a month or twice a month if I have the time. So first thing I'm gonna do is align my wheels. I'm gonna align my front and rear wheel just so I can roll smooth, roll straight, uh, make sure you don't hit the frame. To make sure when I align my brakes, they all line up correctly, centered, and there's no rope. And for this, I'll use the 15 with extension. Depending on your bike, you might have a different size. Like BMXs, they have the 17 or 19 millimeter bigger bolts or smaller bolts. But for me, and a lot of wheelie bikes, a lot of BMXs, uh, a lot of big bikes have the 15 millimeter. But if you have a different one, make sure you use a different one and not the 15. PSA. I've been getting a lot of questions on why the back wheel rubs on the Goon XL, uh, why it may go crooked and hit the frame. Mine used to as well. And it's very unfortunate, but it is what it is. It's like that because the Goon XLs are the first 27.5 fat wheel bikes by Throne Cycles. So it's literally our first time doing these kind of bikes, these kind of frames, the fat wheel. So yeah, the first bike was a little messed up on the back. The geometry isn't perfect. That's just because Throne Cycles isn't a copy and paste company. We don't just go copy and paste the geometry from another bike and then apply it to our bike. It's similar to other fat wheels, but obviously not. But don't panic, because we will get it right on the next run. The issue is noted down. And on my Goon, my back wheel does not rub, and I'll show y'all why in a bit. But if you have a Goon XL, you should probably do what I'm doing. But if you or your homie is deciding to get one, uh, but y'all want it to come correct, just wait to the next drop. But if y'all want to get one ASAP and support, or just have a bike to ride, this is an easy fix, it's not expensive, and y'all probably want to do this anyway. So for my Goon XL owners, this is all you really need to do. If you run pegs, make sure you have washers between the peg and the frame, so there's uh, not too much contact between the peg and the frame. The washer keeps it from uh, spinning off the frame. Half the chain is perfect. Uh, for the bike, it won't rub if you tighten the bolts all the way. So make sure you get a half link that fits uh, pretty decent and then make sure you tighten the bolts all the way and tighten them really good. And that's how you fix the Goon XL rubbing issue. So back to the video, I'm gonna use this thing right here. I'm not sure what this is. I think this is like a rolling, a rolling, uh, some kind of rolling thing for cooking. I'm not sure. I got it from my kitchen drawer, so it's probably for cooking. But you can use a mop or a broom or like a handle of a hammer, but I'm gonna use this because it seems pretty decent to use. So with this, I'm gonna push the wheel back. Let's say you have no help, or let's say you don't know how to do it that good by yourself. Put the object between the frame and the wheel, just like that. So what I did was put the object between the frame and the wheel. Essentially to tighten the chain, give some tension because you don't want to ride with a loose chainery. Make sure the center seam right here, I probably can't see it that good on camera, but the center seam on the tire, line it up with the dot right here. That's how I always line up my wheel. But look at the sides, make sure there's a good amount of space between each side. And then I tighten my wheel. So after tightening this side down, I can take the wooden object out and then I tighten the left side. And with my hands, I'll push the other wheel to, you know, center it up again and tighten. So now the wheel is centered. I centered the center seam with the dot right here and it's pretty pretty center. You probably won't get your first try. I always take multiple tries because I like my wheel centered. I got OCD. It is what it is, but yeah. And for me, I'm using a bike stand like that that goes inside the crank. It's pretty dope, but any bike stand will work. Or you can flip it upside down on the bars and the seat. However you do it, either way it works, it don't matter. Line the center seam. Y'all can see it better on this wheel. The center seam, line it up with the dot right there, and that's how you know it's centered. 
Next is tighten all your bolts. So to tighten my bolts, I'm using a five millimeter Allen key, just like this. You might use different ones, six millimeter, four millimeter. I think I'm gonna use a four millimeter and a five millimeter for my levers. But first, I use the five millimeter. So tightening all your bolts is super crucial. <laughs> What's the deal? <laughs> this is better. Tighten your stem bolts. You can get a rod or just riding, doing a trick, do a willy, drop a wheel down, boom, your bars fold, you get folded. So make sure your bolts are all tight. This is a huge, huge key. When you tighten stuff like this where it has multiple bolts, maybe a, a disc or rotor, don't tighten the top all the way and then tighten the bottom because it's not going to evenly you know, distribute the, uh, what, the, the, what is it? You always want to tighten it in a pattern. Tighten the top left a little bit, bottom right a little bit, top right a little bit, bottom left a little bit to get it evenly, you know, mounted on. Next, tighten the stem that connects to the fork. You don't want your bars to go crooked while you're riding. Have you turn it left when you're trying to go right. Have you going left when you're trying to go straight. You already know how that go. You see the double lever DZ setup. Yes, sir. This fire bulls out lever from Airborne Vic. That thing is clean and it matches the bike perfectly. And you want to tighten these bolts pretty good. You don't want them to shift while you're riding. Tighten your seat post clamp. Always. You don't want to be doing a trick, a combo, whatever. And boom, your seat shifts and you fall. Tighten your seat post clampery. No cavery. Make sure your pedals are tight. You don't want them to uh, be loose and then it strips your crank. Because that will make a bigger problem. When really, all you have to do is tighten your pedals. Make sure they're tight all the time. And I'll save you money on buying new cranks. So make sure them tangs is tightened down. Tighten your cranks. Make sure you don't forget the bolts on your cranks. Because that's really important. You don't want your crank to fall off in a ride, in traffic, wherever. So to re-tighten this, you want to loosen these two screws, the pinch bolts, and then tighten this bolt. Once that's tight, then you tighten these to lock it in. So do not tighten these first. If you tighten these first, it could make the crank still loose. Make sure you tighten this bolt first to push the crank in and then use these to lock the crank in. So after you line the wheel, after you tighten all the bolts, next is adjust your brakes. Adjusting your brakes will make sure you have good stopping power. Make sure the pad is lined with the rotor, you're getting good brake uh, you know, coverage, and it will help the brake not rub the disc. No resistance, and you'll ride smooth. The brakes I currently run on my bike. This is the TRP um, cable actuator hydraulic caliper. If you don't know about these, look them up. TRP, HY, RD. I got these from Jimmy's Bikes, I love them. Uh, with these, it feels just like a hydraulic brake. And here is hydraulic, and I can run a regular cable just like this, and any lever I want. That's why I love it. But to adjust the brakes, it works like any other disc brake, mechanical, hydraulic uh, brakes like these. It's the same concept. Y'all gonna have this bolt in that bolt. So to adjust your brakes, you first need to loosen your bolts. Not too loose, just loose enough so that they move. This one needs a little bit more loosening. So what you wanna do is loosen your caliper just like this. And then, if you have help, that'd be great, but if not, it's all good. You want to pull your lever, your brake lever. You see how I'm pulling it? And tighten your bolts. Remember, like I said, tighten a little bit at a time to make sure you have even amount of force. Yes, sir. That's how you adjust disc brakes. It's similar to my other video, how to adjust brakes for wheelies on uh, rim brakes, V brakes. If you haven't seen that, you have rim brakes. Check out the video right there. Watch that after the video. But if you've seen that video and you're watching this right now, you can tell it's kind of similar. It's the same concept, but it's just different because it's this and loads of V brakes. If you have front brakes, repeat to the front. Make sure you squeeze and brakes pretty good while you tighten it. So if you adjusted your wheel correctly and adjusted your brakes correctly, you should have no rub. Uh, with the brake pad in the disc or brake pad in your rim, whatever brakes you have. So now we're on to cleaning and greasing your chain or lubricating your chain. I'm using an old dirty shirt uh, to clean my chain. Just like that. Make sure you're wiping the chain, top, bottom, sides. You never want a dirty chain. You never want to dirty anything. Make sure it's clean. Get all the chunks out, get all the dirt out. They sell chain brushes or chain cleaners that look crazy. I will use degreaser for the chain, but right now I don't have degreaser, but I do want to have my chain nice and lubricated, 
clean before this ride out coming up. The seven ride out. So wipe it down. Get all the gunk that's in there. So now I'm about to apply some Dumonde. I think that's what it's called. Dumonde Tech chain lube so i actually got this from a cab the uh, bike event i talked to the lady that runs this she said uh a little bit goes a long way so i won't be using too much this is actually a sample shout out to her so when you lubricate your chain having too much lube can make it too wet and then that'll track more dirt and make it more dirty faster and just wear out your chain and having too little can make your chain snap because it's metal on metal. It wear down the, uh, the links and then that's another problem. So you want a good amount, perfect amount. If you add too much lube, you wanna wipe it off. So after coating the whole chain in lube, you do wanna wipe off the excess. So after you distribute the lube uh, throughout every link, take your time with it, move the chain, pedal it some, make sure it's well lubricated, and after that, you're gonna wipe off the excess lube because you don't attract too much dirt. That's pretty much it when it comes to maintaining your BMX bike, your Willy bike. 27.5, the Goon XL, DZ Edition, whatever bike you have, that's how I maintain it. I think you should try it too. Always keep your bike in good condition, take care of your bike, it's expensive, take care. So in this video, I did leave out the cleaning of the bottom bracket. That's where I'll use this grease and degrease it, clean it out. Let me know if I should do a video just on how to clean the bottom bracket. Comment down below if I should do it or not. But other than that, that's basically how you maintain your Willy bike. All I'm about to do now is wipe down the bike and get it ready for the ride. But if you enjoyed this video, leave a comment, smash, demolish, lightly abuse that like button. And share the video if you really like it. And let me know if I should make more videos like this. I got more ideas in mind. Just let me know if I should start dropping. Let me know if y'all want to see it. And as always, y'all, stay blessed, stay productive, and stay safe. Until next time, I love y'all. Yes, sir.